Hey everybody, it's Shark Scrapper, and yes, I bought a stripper. But the question is, was she worth the money? Remember, the best way to watch out for the shark is to like and subscribe to this channel. Make sure you tell your friends and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode. This is the stripper that I bought. The Penson & Company WSM25, real nice device, quarter horsepower motor, adjustable blade, 110 power plugs in with a three plung plug, that's harder to say than it sounds, uh, and uh, a safety guard. So real nice uh, device, I like it a lot. I can uh, move it around from the back of my truck to my workbench. So a lot of flexibility with it. And uh, you'll see me make some minor adjustments and, and tweak it as we go through the video. Now one of the things that we hear people say a lot in scrapping videos is that you should strip your copper wire, uh, especially if it's a heavier gauge, a thicker gauge, and because uh, you'll get more money, right? Get more money for your bare bright or your number one or something like that. Well, I thought that I would go ahead and put that argument to the test and take a look at the difference in how much bare bright I need in order to pay for my wire stripper versus how much I could get, how much just like standard Romex I would have to sell to get that same amount of money without spending the time stripping it. So in this video, we're going to look at comparing the trade-off of stripping copper wire versus just selling it as insulated copper wire. Uh, because I want to be able to do some rigorous comparisons, I'm going to concentrate on using Romex. The reason for that is you can look up Romex and get the weights by length for the different grades of Romex, and it allows us to do a real good apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Now, for those of you familiar with Romex, I apologize. Let me just take a minute for those of you that may be new to some of the classifications to understand what we mean by Romex. Romex is just a brand name. It's wire that has uh, anywhere from three to four copper wires wound up inside of and covered with another sheet of insulation, which allows the contractor to push pull wire through uh, door, uh, the you know, wall frames and things like that when they're doing building. Now you'll notice on Romex that there will always be a number, something like 14-2 or 14-3. That tells you the gauge of the wire and how many wires are in there. Now, when you see the two, what that's telling you is that there are two insulated wires. Then there's also going to be a third ground wire, which will have paper on it, as you can see here, but is otherwise not insulated. Compare that to a 10-3, which is 10 gauge, three wire, which has three insulated wires, and then one paper covered copper wire. So that's important to remember, as you'll see when we go uh, start talking about comparing uh, the wires for the copper that will come out of them, because the 10-3 or the 12-3 or the 14-3 will have four wires in it, whereas a dash two, whether it's a 14, 12, or 10, two, will have three wires in it, two insulated, one bare, usually paper coated. The other thing that you'll very quickly come to understand is that 14 gauge Romex is going to be cased in white, and 12 gauge Romex is going to be cased in yellow. And you can see here, it's a little bit hard to see. I apologize because the way it's smeared on the printing on this particular cable. But right there you can see 12-2. 12 gauge Romex will always be yellow. 14 gauge will always be white. <clears throat> now, I'm going to further concentrate this study on the 14 gauge because uh, there's some good numbers that I can get via various websites that will tell me the weight of 14-2 per thousand feet and then I can go get the weight of 
just 14 gauge copper wire, what we would might refer to as bare bright, per thousand feet as well. And that will allow us to do a real good, easy comparison on how much you would get for the comparable amount of copper wire or insulated wire. Now, you will see in this video um, uh, some of the different methods for pulling apart the wires in here. Um, and other people have come up with a lot of different uh, tricks for doing this. And some folks will take a length of it and put a blade on a, uh, a workbench and then pull the uh, outer sheathing through in order to separate them. I find that I can usually just pull the things apart. Uh, once I've got it started like this, I can just take hold of one end with a pair of pliers, grips, and uh, with a you know, nitrile-coated rubber glove, something that has a little uh, sticky to it, I can hold on to the other end and then just pull them apart. And that also allows me to get a little bit of exercise. Okay, warning for everybody. There is graphic math content ahead. So those of you that have weak stomachs or non-nerdy dispositions, you may want to fast forward to where we get back to actually scrapping. Those of you that have a little bit stronger disposition, hang in there with me. I said I wanted to stick with the white Romex, the 14 gauge, because I can get these kind of numbers. 14.2, which has three wires in it, weighs 57 pounds per thousand feet. 14.3, with the four wires in it, weighs 78 pounds per thousand feet. And bare 14 gauge copper wire weighs 12.4 pounds per thousand feet. Here are the sources that I used. Next, I went to the iScrap app, and I did that on the 9th of November, 2019. By the way, if you have not subscribed to the iScrap app, I highly recommend it. This is not a paid advertisement. I like it. I use it. It's very useful, so you all ought to check it out if you haven't already. All right, so um, as of the 9th of November, Bear Bright was paying $2.12 a pound, and Romex was paying $0.95 cents a pound. The cost of my stripper was right around $212. If you look today on Amazon, I think they're going for $209, $210. So we're going to say $212 because that allows us to round to a very nice number of 100 pounds of Bear Bright that is needed to pay for the stripper. In order to get 100 pounds of Bear Bright, we would need 8 1,064 and a half feet of bare bright at 14 gauge. All right, so how are we going to come up with 8,064 and a half feet of bare bright when we have 14.2 or 14.3? What we would need to do is simply divide the number by the number of wires that's going to be inside each one of those. So in 14.2, we would need to strip 2,688.2 feet of 14.2 in order to get the equivalent amount of bare bright. Uh, for a 14.3, we would need to strip 2,016.1 feet. Now let's go back to the 14.2. If we strip 2,688.2 feet, <clears throat> uh, the weight of the 14.2 itself before we stripped it, would be 153.23 pounds. That much Romex would give us $145.56. So hopefully you were able to follow me there. The same with the 14.3. If we took 8,000, in order to get 8,064 and a half feet of bare bright, we would have to strip 2,016.1 feet of the 14.3 and if we were to just sell that 14.3, that would be 157.26 pounds, and we would get paid $149.40. The reason why these are different is because you're only being paid for Romex based on one price, 95 cents a pound. But the 14.2 and the 14.3 have different amounts of copper inside of them. Uh, so, put this another way you would have made an additional $66.44 by stripping the 14.2.
you would have made an additional $62.60 by stripping the 14.3. All right, so you can see that right here. The Bear Bright would have been $212. You would have gotten 100. If you had just sold it as Romex, you would have only gotten 145.56. So you made $66.44 by stripping, taking the time to strip the Romex. Now, what we need to do is take a step back and say, all right, so yeah, we make more, but what is our time worth? Now, that's important for some people. Now, some people not so much, right? I'm, I do this as a hobby, so for me, the time is, you know, I'm just killing time anyway, so it's not that valuable, although it can be, right? Uh, but for those of you that are doing this as a business, you no kidding need to pay attention to what your time is worth. So I did a little experiment where I took a 10 foot length of Romex and I stripped it down and I timed how much it, take me, it took me to do each of the critical steps. So let's go take a quick look at that video so that we can stop looking at this silly Excel spreadsheet. So what I've done for this exercise is I have cut a one piece, one, excuse me, a one foot long piece of 14.2 and I have cut a 10 foot long section of 14.2. Um, the idea here is to give us an idea of how long it takes to actually go about stripping this. So uh, we are going to uh, figure out how long it takes for me to separate the first part of it, which is uh, just the, um, the part where I separate the wires from the primary housing. Let's go ahead and get a stopwatch going here. That's not it. There we are, that's what I want. Okay, so with the longer, with what I do with the Romex uh, is I take my edge cutter, I snip an end, that allows me to start separating them and uh, then I can grab hold of the two insulated pieces, give them a tug, and then once they start coming apart, then I can just keep pulling them apart. Good man, how about you? So that's about a minute. So our little timing experiment demonstrated that it takes a minute to separate and a minute to strip 10 feet of 14-2 or two minutes to get 30 feet of bare bright from the 14-2. So that means we were stripping at about 15 feet per minute 
Uh, so in order to strip 2,688 feet, it would take us about 179 minutes or roughly three hours. And we know we made $64.44 in that three hours. So we were working for about $21.5 an hour. Not bad wages. All right, so the next time you're asking yourself, do I strip this wire down? Do I get this wire stripper? Think about $21.50 an hour and see if it's worth it to you. Hey, I had a great time putting this video together. I hope you enjoyed it as well. I look forward to sharing more videos with you, and I promise you I will keep the math to a minimum or non-existent. Please make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Tell your friends all about us. I look forward to chatting with you all again next time.